Hey bestie, it's been a minute here. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for still being here, even though I haven't posted long videos for a while now. I've been more regular posting YouTube shorts. Now you can go check out my YouTube shorts videos. I bet you like them. <laughs> so today's class will be a sew along tutorial where I'll be showing you how to sew these asymmetric flounce skirts. You will find the pattern making tutorial in my stretch knit class. I'll drop the link in the description box below. Now go check it out. I also showed how to work with different types of knit fabrics and how to create knit blocks in that class. So having said all of that, let's head over to the table. Let me show you the fabric and the patterns we'll be working with. And as always, leave me a comment below. Let me hear your feedback. And don't forget to subscribe too. Thank you. So we'll be working with just three pattern pieces. Now we have the waistband and then we have the center front and the center back skirt and we have the flounce. So in total we have just three pattern pieces for this skirt. Now let me show you the fabric we'll be using for this skirt. Now we'll need about two meters or two and a half meters of fabric of stretch fabric for this skirt because there's no zipper there's no button and that's why we're using a stretch fabric so you could see this is a stretch fabric all right now two and a half meters or two meters depending on how big you are and uh, depending on the, the length or how wide your flounce is all right so now I'm going to place my patterns and then cut them out. Wow, so this is how our flowers is going to look like. Nice, right? I already like it. <laughs> Okay, good. So now we are ready to start stitching our skirts. So you can decide to use a regular sewing machine or you can decide to use a four thread overlocker. Both of them works. Okay, so for this one, you're going to just lie your skirt flat like this, the upper section. And then this is the right side of my fabric. And then you're going to place the other one on top, right side against facing the right side, just like this. And then you are going to go join them together on the side seam. So you're going to go stitch from here all the way down to the end. And then you're going to do the same thing for this side as well. Okay, so once you finish, you can either use your three thread overlocking machine to overlock them separately and then you open press your seam allowance or you can just overlock them together and then push them to one side like this and then iron nicely. Alright, you're going to do the same thing for the other side. So once you finish pressing, you're going to have something like this. Now, the next thing would be for us to set this aside and then we're going to work on the waistband. So you're going to take your waistband, you place one lying flat like this with the right side up and then you place the other one on top just like this with the right side facing the right side. Now you're going to go ahead and stitch this and then you're also going to go ahead and stitch these parts. Thank you. 
and then you're going to do exactly the same thing for this other side one of them is going to be for the facing so now you're going to take it to this uh, ironing board and then you're going to open press your seam allowance so after open pressing your seam allowance just like this you are going to flip it to the right side and leave it like this now you're going to take the other waistband take note this part is the top while this part is the bottom please try not to make a mistake don't fix them upside down all right so you place one part you see the right side facing the right side you place them together just like this we are going to pick see I'm just picking the center front or the center back yeah the same thing so you pick two of them and then you use your pins to hold them together in place just like this now you hold them again together at the side seam so that you'll be sure that the the side seams they will match so you place a pin directly on the side seam and then you pin it just like that and then you go to the other side seam and then you open your make sure your seam allowance is open like this okay match your side seams very nicely and then you take another pin and then you pin nicely directly on your stitch line all right so you cannot flip it like that okay so you see what i've done now you hold this the center uh, front or the center back just use your pin to hold them together in place just like this so this is what we've got you can add more pins so that it will be easier for you to stitch we are actually going to stitch the waistband, the top part, all around. We're going to leave the bottom part first because we'll fix that one later to the skirt. So you can add more paint so that it will be easier for you to stitch. Okay, so this is what you're going to have. So you're going to stitch from one end all around, all the way down to the other end. So once you finish, you are going to move your seam allowance. You see, just move your seam allowance. Move it to any part, any of the side, either this side or this side, doesn't matter. Because one side anyway is going to be our facing. So move it to one side, just like this. And then you're going to top stitch on it. You're going to top stitch on it all the way down to the other side. So you're going to top stitch. You can place it like this and top stitch on it. But usually I like top stitching from the front so that I can see it very well so it depends on you you can top stitch from the back or you can top stitch from the front now I've moved my seam allowance to this side and I'm going to top stitch on this part so the top stitching is about maybe from from this my seam line here for my seam line here to this part should be maybe about 0 0.2 cm or at most 0 0.5 cm it shouldn't be too big so i make sure you use your hands to flatten it your fingers to flatten it nicely like that and then you top stitch Now the reason why we had to move our seam allowance and top stitch on one side of our waistband is so that it will relax, relax nicely and our facing will not be peeping out. We want it to look really nice and professional. All right. Okay. So if you fold it like this now, you see that your facing is not peeping out. You see, your facing rolls in nicely. You see it? So it makes a whole lot of difference when you top stitch. You see it now? 
So you're going to take it to the ironing board and then you iron it very nicely. So when you finish ironing, you're going to have something like this. Okay, the other extra thing I did was I folded in my seam allowance at the lower part. So see what I did. So you see, for body facing and for the waistband itself, I just folded in the seam allowance. So whatever seam allowance you added to yours, please fold it in nicely like this. This is about 1.5 cm. So you fold it from one end all the way to the other end. And then you also fold for the face seam as well. The reason why you do this is so that it will make it easier for you to attach it to the skirt. So now once you've done this, you are going to attach it to your skirt. So you take your skirt, all right, just place it like this. And then we're going to attach the facing first. So you're going to pick the facing. Now the facing is the inner one, the one that has top stitching. So you're going to grab it like this. So you see, when you're stitching, you're going to follow the fold line. That is why you have to iron it in the first place. So you take the side seam, and then you're going to place it inside the skirt, just like this. See, place it inside. So this is the right side, and this is the wrong side of my skirt. So you just place it inside like this, and then you use your pins to hold them together in place. Just make sure the side seams are matching. Use your pin to hold them together in place, just like that. And then you're going to continue pinning it. So let me place it like this so that I can see. Place it in a way that, you see this is your fold line here. You, it will be facing you so you can see it very nicely. Now you're going to match your center the center front or the center back, match them together. Use your pins to hold them together in place. And then you're going to walk down to your other side seam. And then you're going to match your side seam, your waistband side seam against the waistband of your, against your waistband, your, <laughs> Your skirt side seam against the waistband side seam. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. All right. So, and then you're just going to continue pinning them. So when you finish pinning, you're going to have something like this. So you see? So you're going to go stitch from one end all the way down to the other end. Okay, so once you are done now, you're going to take it to the ironing board and then you're going to iron this is your seam allowance you're just going to iron it up towards your waistband so iron it like this from one end to the other end towards your waistband so that you can use the other part of your waistband to cover it nicely so it's going to look like this all right so when you finish ironing your waistband is going to look like this so you see, I've ironed the seam allowance towards the waistband. Now we're going to finish off the waistband nicely. So you're just going to go to one end like this, your side seam, make sure that your, the side seams are matching. Use your pins to hold them. Now in this case, it's really very important for you to pin them. Because if you don't pin them, one of them is stretched out more than the other one. So it's really important for you to pin, pin them so that you have a very nice um, finishing. Now we're going to top stitch on it. So once you pin all the way down to the end, you're going to top stitch on these parts. So you're going to top stitch from the end here, maybe about 0 0.2 or about 0 0.5 cm. So you just top stitch nicely 
from one end all the way down to the other end. So you cut off the loose thread and then you're going to take it to the ironing board and give it a very good press. Alright? So now the next thing we're going to do will be for us to attach our flounce to our skirt. So you're going to take your flounce and then you just place it. Now you would have already identified which part you want to take as your back. This is going to be my back side so I have my label here. So you take the part that you want to be your back side, choose one side, it depends on you. Because the front and the back, they are just about the same thing. So you're going to look for the notch that you placed on your flounce. So there's one notch here at my center back, there's a notch here at my center front. So you're just going to place it just like this. Okay, so this notch against the, the center front notch against my center front skirt and then the center back notch against my center back um, skirt. So with the right side of the fabric facing themselves like this, you're just going to flip this over just like this. It's easier for you to do it like this so you don't get confused. So this is my center front notch. I'm picking it and then I'm going to pick my center front skirt notch and then place them together like this now once you flip them over the fabric is going to be on the wrong side now all right now you're going to take your center back notch against it for your flounce against your center back for your um for your skirt and then you're just going to pin them together like this now if you also notch the side seam you're going to go ahead and then pin the side seam against the side seam okay so now you're going to pin everything all around before you take it to your sewing machine and then you're going to stitch them together okay so now you're going to go ahead start from one end and stitch it all around. Join the flounce and the skirt together. Okay, so once you finish joining them together, you cannot go ahead and overlock the raw edges and then it will remain the hemline. Now, for you to have a very nice finished hemline, um, you're going to first of all going to overlock this. It's really important for you to overlock it. But if you don't have an overlocking machine, you can use your pinky shears. Your pinky shears is the what people normally call the zigzag scissors. You can use that and trim off the edges a little bit. Then before you fold it like this. But sometimes some of these um neat fabric they don't free so if it doesn't free don't you don't need to bother at all just fold it nicely like this and then you're going to stitch it all around you're going to fold it say about maybe about one cm or thereabout or even less it really depends just small like that and then you stitch it from one end all the way down to the other end So once you finish yours, you're just going to take it to the ironing board and give it a very good press. So here's how our finished skirt looks like. Nice, right? <laughs> I hope it wasn't too difficult for you. And I'm so looking forward to seeing your skirt on you. So thank you very much for staying with me throughout the course of this class. I'll see you again in our next class. Bye-bye.